your face Oh, I've seen your face <laughs> I've felt your presence Now I'm not going back Oh, and I've heard a thousand stories
Listen, I want to introduce a good friend of mine. Uh, I met with Gordon this week. He called me, and, and the Lord has really given him a download of a revelation on the, the blessing that we are to walk in this hour. And I, I said, Gordon, you've got to share that because we've got to have that. And so he's going to share a 10-minute version today, a shortened version, but then he's going to come back toward the end of December, and he's going to take the whole time and give us a little deeper Revelation foundations, but I want him to do that. Come up and bless us, share that blessing, and then lead us in that blessing. Speak it over us, and then he's going to come back later and do it a whole bunch more. But come on up, welcome Gordon Tesler. Uh, it's always good to come and stand between the flag of the United States and the flag of Israel. Also, and we say to both of these nations, not God bless them, but United States, bless God. You, Israel, bless God. That first song we sang about the blowing of the wind, <clears throat> there was a line in there that said, uh, I have passion for your name. Remember that in there? I have passion for your name. That's, that's me. I have passion for the name of God. It has been hidden from us through the centuries, the name of God. And now it's even hard to know how to pronounce the name of the Father. Uh, some call him Yahuwah. Comes from Yehuda. And they say it's pronounced, you know, it's the yud heh vav -Hey. And that particular name is mentioned 6,880 times in the Bible. You would think if it was named that many times that we should say it. But the rabbis in the second century began to hide the name of God from the people. So, it's my desire that we have that name again <clears throat> and that we speak that name. And uh, one of the exciting things for me is when God says something and tells the priests to say it over the people. So we have that in uh, Numbers uh, chapter uh, 6. So if you'll go there with me to Numbers chapter 6, I just want to read this and then I'll just speak from that point on. But I, I think it's important that we read uh, the Word of God as well. It uh, starts in, in verse 22 of Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew, <laughs> of Numbers chapter 6 starting in verse 22 and it's entitled the priestly blessing and we all know this we've heard it many many times where it says and, and the Lord and there that word Lord is not really Lord in the Hebrew they use the word Adonai but it's not really Adonai either it is the word some say Yahweh and some say Yehovah. I've come to believe it's Yehovah because many 
uh, uh, scribes and, and, and uh, great uh, teachers of the word say that that four-letter word in there, yod heh vav -Hey, has three syllables. And, uh, and so it's uh, Yehovah. At least that's the word I'm going to use today, Yehovah. And he says, Yehovah spoke to Moses and said, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Now, God, Yehovah, is about to tell us his prayer for the children of Israel. But let me say to you that you are part of Israel. That's Ephesians 2. You can write that down and read it later. Ephesians 2 says of the non-Jews that you were far off, had no God and no hope, but you were brought close. You were brought close and are now fellow citizens with the children of Israel. Fellow citizens. And it also says in Romans 11, and I love that particular chapter, it talks about the olive tree which belongs to Israel and it says, you are wild olive branches. <laughs> I don't know if you think of yourself that way, but you are wild olive branch. It's time to be wild. And the, those, those were also grafted in to this olive tree. So this blessing belongs to you as fellow citizens grafted in. And it says, the Lord or Jehovah bless you and keep you. Jehovah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is quite a blessing. And we stop there, but it says right after that, so they shall put my name on the children of Israel. And God says, I will bless them. So this blessing is about putting the name on us. And when we have the name on us, we are blessed. So I, I love this blessing, and I will do it in Hebrew in just a moment. But I want to say to you that uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at a very low point. I know none of you get there, but I, I was at a very low point. Uh, physically, uh, I'd had some things pronounced over me that took all the energy out of me. And so I was weak in, in every way you could think of. And uh, that day I had to go counsel someone on nutrition and I said to the Lord, Lord, I have nothing for them. You're going to have to give me something because I don't have anything. And that consultation, without going into it, was one of the best consultations I'd ever been involved in. And the Lord spoke to that woman and some shame that she'd been carrying her whole life was brought into the light and she was freed after 20 years. And it wasn't me, because I had nothing for her. So I thanked the Lord. And, and I got home. My wife, Laura, was in Raleigh. So that's not a good feeling anyway, to have your wife way off, away from you. And, you, and I'm feeling so weak. And then the Lord spoke to me. In a second, he laid something on me and it was about this blessing, which I had done many, many times because I love it. And he said, and I'm going to say this to you. It says, Jehovah bless you and keep you. Well, think about this in the Bible. Who did God bless and say, I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing and you're going to bless every family of the earth. That was Abraham. 
the Lord was telling me this first line is about the Abrahamic covenant. Now, I don't have time to go into that, but every covenant has blessings and promises and has a sign. And it's important for us to know what the Abrahamic covenant was because God has blessed you with it. You walk in the blessing of that. The second one says, and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Well, who came down from the mountain who had talked face to face with God and his face shone that they had to put a veil on it because the glory of God had shined on him and his face shone so brightly that the people had to put a veil on him. Who's that? No, that was Moses. That was Moses. The Mosaic Covenant has many, many blessings. We hear a lot of negative about the Mosaic Covenant, but that's where we get the Ten Commandments, number one. And grace. Moses talked a lot about grace. And God was very gracious to Israel and very gracious to Moses. So that second line is about the blessing of the Mosaic Covenant upon us. And we need to know what that covenant is, what the promises are, and what the sign is of that covenant. And the third one, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, countenance has to do with the face of God. And lifting up is a smile. <laughs> but the Lord showed me something else. He said, you know, when a father has a son, he lifts that son up. Abraham did this with Isaac. You know, Isaac means laughter. Do you know that? Because Sarah and Abraham laughed a lot about this son. In fact, Sarah laughed in the tent when the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, next year at this time, you're going to have a child. Well, Sarah laughed. Abraham also laughed, but in the scriptures, those are two different laughters. One was kind of an unbelieving laughter. That was Sarah. And the other was laughing for joy. That was Abraham. And when Sarah came out of the tent, the Lord said to her, you laughed. And she said, no, I didn't. I didn't laugh. You, you did laugh. But next year at this time, you're going to have a child. So Abraham lifted up Isaac. And Jehovah lifted up Yeshua. And I will lift him up. And he shall be lifted up, the scripture says. When, you, when the father lifts up the son and smiles upon him. Have you ever seen a father do that? Smile upon the son. That's what this is referring to. This is referring to the son being lifted up by the Father and give you peace. Well, who is the Prince of Peace? Jesus. So this is the new covenant here. The third one is the new covenant. So God wants to bless us in a way that we aren't even aware of. In fact, the priests weren't even aware of what this blessing really was all about. But God was going to bless us with the Abrahamic covenant, the father. You know, Abraham is the father on earth. He's the father for us. There's a great book, Our Father Abraham. Whether you're a Christian or a Jew, your father is Abraham. We come from Abraham. We're either physical sons of Abraham or we're spiritual sons of Abraham. And so God is blessing us with these covenants and he wants us to know what they are and this is another passion of mine is to teach covenants because we as Westerners know nothing of covenant 
You know, even the little we know of covenant is about the, the marriage between the man and a woman. And that is being destroyed in our nation right now. That covenant is being destroyed and we really don't even understand what that covenant is. So God, we, we serve a covenant-keeping God that blesses. He doesn't curse us. But if we choose to move away from him, we receive curses. If we choose to move towards him, there's blessing there. It's a choice we make. But our God blesses, and we're supposed to bless. Just like Abraham. We're supposed to be a blessing because we're blessed. We should be a blessing. Instead, we're all involved with ourselves. <laughs> I'm not just pointing a finger here, folks. We are too involved with ourselves. And the only way we should be involved with ourselves is to thank the Lord for the blessing of this priestly blessing to us. God, the priest didn't bless anybody. God says here, if you'll say this prayer that I have written, Jehovah says, and put my name on them, I'll bless them. That's quite a promise to us. We should use this blessing all the time, especially over your family and over your children. You know, in, in Jewish homes on Friday night is the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the sign, by the way, of the Mosaic Covenant, the Shabbat. So the Jews were always forbidden to keep the Sabbath wherever they lived in the nations because the Sabbath says one thing there is only one God and he's the creator of everything and he rested on the seventh day and the nations didn't want that to be known so we have this blessing I'm going to bless it over you and by the way when we do at the end of this service when we do the communion, which means come into union. The communion is entering the covenant. We forget that. Do you know when you keep the, when you take communion, you are making a pledge to enter the covenant, the new covenant. That's why it's important, it says, not to drink it unworthily. Unworthily meaning that you don't confess your sins before you enter. See, we have the blessing of confessing our sins and having them removed so we can enter the covenant with the lamb, with his blood and his body. So, Father, thank you for this blessing that we're about to use and just, just receive now, just receive this blessing upon yourself, upon your family, from God, from Jehovah. Feel the Lord coming right now. See him, feel him all over. Yavarechecha Yahova Varishmarecha Yase Yahova Panavalecha Vihunaka Yisa Yahova Panavalecha Viyasem Lecha Shalom. May Jehovah bless you and protect you. 
May Yehovah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. Have his loving kindness upon you. May Yehovah lift up his countenance call you a son, call you a daughter, and lift you up and smile upon you and give you peace, give you health, and give you wholeness in the name of Jehovah. Amen. Amen. If you receive that, just say amen. amen. I receive it. That's important. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, Lord, I wanted uh, so much for Gordon to do that. I did. Hey, we, we did not touch base today on how to dress. We really didn't. Sometimes... Yeah, one time somebody saw me and he said, are you Gordon? I said, no, I'm, I'm not. So we're dressing alike. It's, that's pretty cool. Thank you, Jesus. There's no question, though, we're, we're living in a time of accelerated revelation. There's um, much is being revealed. And so when he shared this revelation, I mean, I said, you got to share it. We're living in uh, unbelievable times. How many of you know that? And we got to be ready you got to be, man, solid in your faith. you got to be, you got to know in whom you have believed. And uh, be persuaded that what he's promised, what he said he's going to do. And I'm just telling you, you got to be ready. Um, there's only going to be two groups of folks when it's all said and done. You know that, don't you? Those who follow him and those who deny him. And it's the way we live our lives. This has nothing to do with your confession before men. It, it, I mean, that's how you confess salvation. But, but it's a daily walk, a daily uh, life dependence. And um, I have a feeling if we knew how late it was, it'd be, we'd be living a whole lot different. And, um, but I, I want to share this morning uh, two things. First of all, at, toward the end, I want to share about Thanksgiving quickly. We got to, there's a real key to overcoming this day, to be thankful. And so there's just a couple things I want to catch up on. But I want to remind you, first of all, of the times in which we're living and how to stand. How many of you want to stand when it's all said and done? Finally, brethren, when you've done it all, stand. I don't want to be one that falls away, drifts away, and uh, denies them. Because you're going to have the opportunity to do that. I'm telling you. This is a very serious time. I, I just, I've never felt so, I, I'm just telling you, I've never felt quite like this. We, uh, it's just an amazing time. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you feel an intensity in your spirit? God's stirring. And there's a hunger and a passion. You know this is not normal living. This is not normal. I mean, this is not in the 1960s. This is really the real thing. And um, we want to be ready. So, Lord, I ask you now for an anointing to share. Thank you for that blessing this morning. And, uh, Lord, we want to be blessed. We want to walk in this world. We want to be the fragrance of the knowledge of God in every place. Lord, when we walk in Food Lion or Walmart, God, we want hell to tremble because we walked in to buy a loaf of bread. Lord, we're asking, impart that to us. Lord, that revelation that we are the sweet aroma of the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ. To some, it will lead to death from death to death. They'll reject us. They'll hate us. But others, it'll be from life to life. And so, Lord, I thank you for that. And I ask God, put it on us today. Put it on us. Lord, dump, on, dump that heavenly perfume on every one of us. We want to either be a sweet-smelling aroma or we want to be the... the the stench to the ungodly because of their ungodliness. Lord, we want to make a difference. 
We're going to live for you. We thank you. God, impart to every person an anointing for this morning. Lord, thank you for the fire of God. And just do it, Lord. Don't let anybody leave unchanged without having met you. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Helen. Isn't Helen precious? Give her a hand. She's sweet. She's real. I really appreciate Helen. Well, uh, there's a lot of things advancing. Can I just tell you, evil is advancing on many fronts. One day you listen, you wake up, and you hear the, the threat of terrorism, Russian jet being shot down by Turkey. And you know that's not the end of that story. How many of you know that? It's not the end of the story. It's just the beginning. And then we hear about radical Islam and how they're infiltrating not only Germany and France. They're infiltrating America. Do you know that? There's a thing called stealth jihad. They come in by stealth. And then eventually that will become more of a, uh, a known jihad. And then, you know, we hear about cities again being on the verge of erupting. And at times, you know, it looks like this chaos is almost orchestrated. Anybody feel that way? You wonder, who's pulling the strings around here? What's going on? What's happening in planet Earth? Well, you know, the truth is, there is an agenda. Someone is pulling the strings. Did you know the scripture says, let me share with you, 2 Timothy 3.13. Listen to this. Evil men and imposters. Say imposters. They're going to grow worse and worse. How many of you know that? Worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. Now the word imposter means a seducer. In, in the Greek, it, it's also what's used as a wizard. It's as if they're under a spell and they're casting a spell upon the people. How many of you think we might be living in a time like that? Many are under a spell, a spell of the world. Now the word deceive means to stray from safety or the truth. And here's how else I know there is a plan because John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes for three purposes. What? Steal, kill, and destroy. He's the destroyer. Is he destroying anything today? It's his will to destroy you, your family, everything about us. But we're walking under a different covenant, under a different mandate, if we're walking with the Lord. Now, uh, but Jesus, you know, the end of John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that you might have what? Life and have it more abundantly. And so in the midst of stealing, killing, destroying, then we're going to find a people that are walking in life and not only eternal, but abundant life. Now, this is a day to know your place in God's purposes. You don't want to be wondering, what am I called to do? If you're wondering, get with the business. Get on. Let me tell you, don't wonder anymore. You wonder too long, you, you might miss it. You know, there's an old saying, a woman's place is in her kitchen. Now, that's an old chauvinistic. They'd say, don't say that anymore. But I can tell you, it's true in our house. If I get in the way when Shirley's making Thanksgiving, I'm telling you, it's still true. It's her place. Be careful. Don't do something stupid. or get, Just don't get in the way. You know what I mean. And, uh, but, you know, it's just we don't say that kind of stuff anymore. But it's very important. You know, Jesus is in his place. How I many of you know that? Listen to this. 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, as Gordon said, that he might what? Bring us to God. And then in verse 22. It says this, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. Now listen, this is important. Angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. He's in his place. He knows his place. He's not going to one day rule as king. He is the king. He is ruling. He is reigning. Authorities, powers, all these things or under him, have been made subject to him. In other words, the plans of men are going to ultimately fail. Even the counsel of men will fail. 
But the counsel of God will last forever. The plans of hell are going to be uncovered, exposed. Do you know everything being done in dark, secret, smoky rooms one day is going to be shouted on the housetop? And everything you do in your private one day will become known to all. That's why it's good to have it under the blood, under the blood forgiven, where it's forgotten as far as the east is from the west. Only the plan of heaven is going to succeed. Now, I got to remind you again. I, I keep, I'll keep wondering, Lord, why do I have to keep reminding the people? Because I read a scripture in Jeremiah this week. I meant to look it up, but I'll share with you later. Why does God tell us these kind of things are coming? Why? It's, it's exactly written out in Jeremiah. So that the people would know that he's God and that they'll turn back to him. So what's coming? War. Now, we already know it. We talked about it here, didn't we? We're getting ready for it. But we didn't come up with the revelation. Jesus did. He said, there will be wars, rumors. But what does it say? Be not troubled. Be not troubled. The end is not yet. There's more to be done. You mean even in the midst of it? Yes, this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. That's what we're getting ready for, Jerry. This is the real gospel of the kingdom. It's going to be preached with signs and wonders. They will not be able to deny that Jesus is exactly who he says he is. Now, if he only said there were wars, that wouldn't, we could handle that. But he said there's famines, earthquakes, a lot of good stuff. They'll deliver you up and things like that, put you in prison, cut your head off. That's exciting. I mean, how many of you want to sign up for that one? Did you know we were appointed for these things? You're called. We are to share in the sufferings of Christ. That's part of the blessing. And if we only understood that, we would really know how. Now, how do we get ready for these immediate days? I don't know when it, all this is going to happen. It, we know we, we hear things. It could be next week, next month, next year, 10 years. I don't know. When, when Jesus said wars and rumors are wars, he knew. A bunch of them have come since then, a whole bunch of them. But anyway, here's what you do real quick. Prepare your heart. Search me and try me. Listen, don't let any idol be hidden inside here don't yield surrender get ready make your heart ready get ready as if this is the last day we should be living that way anyway as if the whole thing's going to explode tonight at midnight we should be living that way before the lord as if this is my last day on the earth and then prepare your home when we lived in mobile and a freeze we always got a kick out of this but you know there was a it was a threat of a freeze in mobile they come out with this yellow ticker tape or whatever it is across. Freeze warning. Protect your, what was it? Protect people, pets, plants, and pipes. Was there another P in that? I don't know. I remember. People's pets, pipes, and plants. Why did they put plants last? I don't know. Probably because your pets are more important than, and your pipes are definitely, possibly more important. But I remember that. But you want to be ready. Noah. He built an ark for the saving of his household. What if he had not built the ark? What if, what if Noah had said, when the flood comes, God will take care of me? <laughs> you know what would happen to Noah? He'd have drowned. He would have drowned when he could have lived and saved an entire household. Something to think about. And then be ready to give a reason for the hope. That's something else God showed us. We saw there's a major harvest even from the left coming. How many of you remember that? So we get ready, get ready. Some of these folks will not come to the Lord until the shaking begins. But when the shaking begins, they will run to him because they'll remember and they'll be looking for answers. And so we've got to be ready to give an answer. Now, what else are we to prepare our heart, our home, be ready? Be ready in an evil day. Let, let me read this. Look with me, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 6. Here it is, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to sit down and rest against, no, stand against the wiles of the devil. He's got some wiles. Guess what? 
We do too. We have something greater than him. It's called the Holy Spirit and the gifts and they're ours. Man, what a day. This is an incredible time, but we're going to wrestle. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That means you're going to wrestle. You just don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And if the church could get that revelation, that'd be big time. Don't wrestle against one another. But against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness and all these things. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all. What? Stand. You're responsible for having done all. If you don't do all that God told you to do, don't come whining to us. Telling. Saying, man, you got to help me out here. I, I didn't get enough oil in my lamp. I'm telling, I don't know, I'm going to have enough to give away. I'm not going to have enough. Having done all. Most folks, they believe in the sovereignty of God, but they forget about the responsibility of man. You know, we're going to be responsible before him. Whether we, those who love him, obey him. You don't obey him, you don't love him. I don't care what you say, you do not love him unless you obey him. It's just plain in the scripture. But after he's done all. Now the word stand means abide, continue, covenant. That's interesting. Establish, hold on, stand. We ought to, here's what the King James, now stay with me, don't, don't wander off. Stand by. You ever heard, you know, stand by for this important announcement from whoever. You know, that's the way we ought to live all the time. Stand by. On standby. There are important announcements going to come all the time for the people of God, from the throne of God. He wants to speak to us. He is making some great announcements. Stand by. Stand forth. Stand still. Remember that scripture? Stand still and see the salvation of your God. Remember that? There comes a time when all you can do is stand still. You did it all. What are you going to do then? Stand still and watch your God split the seas. That's pretty cool. And then stand up and then stand on. Stand on. What are you standing on? The Word. Oh, and the Word is also the promises. Look in Hebrews chapter 12. Now stay with me. I know I've got, a, I've got something different going on this morning. But it's good, I hope, because it's good to me. I'm telling you, this is a day, unbelievable revelation. I can't even open the Bible anymore without seeing stuff pop out. Are you like that, Jerry? It's the most incredible time. Man, it's, this is the days. Angels could not wait. They wish they were where we are right now. They'd love to swap places. It ain't going to happen. I'm not going to swap. I'm not going to swap. They can stay where they are. They do their bidding. Minister to us who are going to inherit salvation. But I'm keeping my calling. You too, Josh. You know what I mean? Man, this is it. You, you just open the book today. You say, God won't speak to me. Open the book. Open his will. Open his word. And it'll pop out. Not just some dry. I'm not talking about the dry. You know, I mean, there's some of it. If you read, if you, I don't know. I don't know that any of it's not anointed. But especially, man, just, God, speak to me from your word. You'll be amazed at things you'll see. I'm, this is not, God's no respecter of persons. Even the amens are anointed today. That tells me we are on the verge. We're not in the verge. We're, we're at the door. We're right at the threshold of something we've been made for. I can't wait. All right, and here's Hebrews 12. We are encouraged, now listen, to not refuse, verse 25, not refuse him who speaks, for they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised. Here's a promise. Say a promise. Saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Then you got to read on. Verse 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Say, I'm receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. 
Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably and with reverence and godly fear. Either you will fear God or you'll fear all the devils. I choose the fear of God. You fear God, you won't fear the devils. For our God is a consuming fire. And that fire's coming. It'll consume us or refine us. That's the choice. What does the Lord say? That's why he says, I counsel you. Hey, you want some good counsel? You want some good advice? I counsel you. Buy gold refined in the fire. That's what he says. That's his counsel to us. How many of you want some of that? It comes through the fire. But it's going to last forever. Now, we've got a purpose. We've got a mission. Look in Haggai again. Let me, or stay with me in that. Let me, oh, actually, you didn't go to Haggai yet, did you? You want to go to Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. And um, I think we can read that. Do you guys have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right, look at Haggai chapter 1. Let me just share. You got to get this. You got to know so that you can stand. Stuff's going to start happening. Anyway, look in verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 2. Speak now to Zerubbabel. And the son, well, actually, let me just give you the context. I'm trying to get caught up here. I'm trying to go. You ever try to go too fast, faster than your mind and your tongue especially? So chapter 1, the context, they're getting ready to rebuild the temple. You know what they were doing? They were building their own houses while the temple of God was in ruins. And God says, you consider much, it's all passing away. You, it's like you put stuff in your pocket, it's drifting away. You can't keep it. It's because you're focusing on yourselves. I was thinking about that this week. Everybody's building their own thing while the kingdom of God sits in ruins. The king is going to build the kingdom in this hour. Let me go ahead and just shoot something in advance. Are you ready for this? I feel like they should put that on. Are you ready for this? The church in America is going to be shaken to its core. Everything we've known about church, the church will be shaken, but not the kingdom. So in other words, if you've got only your foot in the church, you in a heap of trouble. You better be in the kingdom. You better, you better have a little bit bigger understanding of what's going on here. Because the church is about to be shaken. There's a lot of stuff going on. The Lord, I don't know that he's happy with. There's a lot of house building. you got to shake it to get the house building out of the place so that the temple of the Lord, where the living stones, the people of God are being made into. Now, so Haggai calls them to be courageous, live holy. I could go off into that. Without holiness, you will not see the Lord. You're not going to see him. Be ye holy. The only way is get close to him. God, I can't live holy. Live close to him, you'll be holy. Because you won't have any after. I mean, you just be so close to him. His character lives through us. The closer. Get closer. That's what he said. Get closer. Get closer. You walk away, you will walk in the curse. You walk in with him and, it, and you'll walk in more blessing than we can contain. Even in the midst of the shaking. All right, here's, here's how you sum it up, Haggai. You got to know this. Everything that can be shaken will be what? What's the key there? What was the key word besides shaken? Everything. 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 Let's see if I can say that different. Everything. 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 You mean everything, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. The purpose is that everything made by man will be removed. But that which God made will remain. That's number three. Number four, God is the one doing the shaking. Now this, you got to get a revelation of this. And I'm not totally there, but ISIS is not doing the shaking. Putin is not doing the shaking. Listen to this. Revelation. Obama is not doing the shaking. There's somebody a little bit higher on the scale than Obama. 
Now, I'm not doubting the imposter, men deceiving, being deceived, all that stuff. I just know who ultimately reigns and his name. He's King Jesus. We're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, shaken. In the shaking, we must be strong. How can you be strong when everything around you is being shaken? You better hang on to something that's solid. You better be standing on the solid rock. You better know the rock. It's going to be known, those who knew him and those who said they knew him but didn't. Oh, boy. When this stuff starts happening in America, it's... <clears throat> Okay, um, you better get, you know, also, we got to boast in our weakness. Remember that that Jeremiah Johnson gave us? Boast in your weakness. We're going to get real good at that. Hey, God, you know what? I can't handle this. You know what he's going to tell you? I know you can. I can. Draw near to me. Greater is he than send me you. And that's me. Than he that's in the world. Okay, the key is that God is with us. Because that's what he told. I didn't get to read all that, but if you read the first chapter of Haggai, he said to tell the people basically, God, I am, God is with you. God's with you. And they said, go strengthen them and the people, let them know and be about the business. God is with you. I would just, just say this say, He is with me. Now say it like you mean it. He is with me. Say it again. He is with me. They ought to sing a song about that. He is with me. He is with me. If you know who's with you, you can make it. God is with me. Almighty God is with me. That's pretty big if you get that. Secondly, he is for you. Say that. He is for me. He's for me. If God be for you, who can be against you? It, oh, man, if we could just see that. God, you mean you're for me? How many of you feel like you're God's favorite? I do. I've always. You should. It's, it's a revelation. You're not. I am his favorite. I want to sit at the right hand. No, 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 no. No, that's, it's not that kind of thing. It's just his favorite. You, everybody should feel that way. He's for you if you know him. He's not against you. And then he's in you. Say, he's in me. Say, he's with me. Say it. He's with me. He's for me. He's in me. How do you know that? Because the scripture says, it is God who is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Greater is he that is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then we got to work while it is day. Work while it is day because night is coming when no man will work. We do not want to have an unfinished work when he comes. I believe there's going to be a testimony on the earth. The church, just like Jesus, will say, it's finished. We did what you called us to do. He said, even as my father sent me, even so send I you. He's not sending a bunch of wimps who are going to fail. He's sending his sons who are going to succeed and do the will of God. Does that make sense? And then my spirit remains among you. You can read all this out of that. It's not by might nor by power. Do not fear. I didn't read that, but it's in there. Do not fear. Keep your focus on the glory that's going to cover the earth. There's a greater vision here. Remember, when people come to you and they're pulling their hair out, you say, yeah, but this is not the end of the story. The end of the story is the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth just like the waters cover the sea. So my advice to you, my friend, get in the water, get in the word, get in the river while you can, because the glory is going to cover the earth. That'd be good advice. And then maintain your peace. How are you going to do that? Remember the blessing. But also, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. Pretty good. Now. One of the keys is being thankful. It's a key to overcoming in this hour. When we, we just gonna, you, you can complain or you can be thankful. Murmurs don't make it. They get kind of left in the wilderness. 
Whatever was written beforehand was written for our example on whom the ends of the ages have come, right? How come they don't tell us that? Oh, God, just keep telling us stuff, Lord. Keep on. I'm telling you, when this thing really explodes like we know it's going to explode, I, I'm not getting here till the last second, okay? I'm going to sneak in because there will be all kinds of things going on in the spirit realm, all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to sneak in. Like my friend Rodney Howard Brown, we were in his church last week. He's got, I think I told you about this. He's got these uh, staircase that goes around like this. They bought an all, old car dealership. So he's got this winding staircase. And then he, you don't see him anywhere except right before, you know, he's getting ready to preach. So he comes down this winding staircase, man. <laughs> it's really, it's, I got to build me one of those. I thought this is, <laughs> except our, ours is downstairs. I'll have to do it like this, you know. I'll just come up, whoa, you know. <laughs> hey, this is cool. And what the really good thing about it, it's not about us winding up or winding down. It's about him winding this thing up. It's about the king that's coming and the kingdom that will last forever and ever and ever. God, give us a vision of the kingdom. Okay, so how are we going to know all this stuff here? Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, 1 through 4. Say, I'm with you. And even if you're not, guess what? I know he is, he's with me. I guarantee you. And I have confidence. Look at this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But understand this. That's in the um, amplified version. In the King James, it says, but know this. Let me just read in the amplified. But understand this, that in the last days, that in the last days will come or they'll set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. Here's how the Amplified defines that. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of themselves and utterly self-centered. It'll all be about themselves. Lovers of money aroused by an inordinate desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemers, scoffing, disobedient, and ungrateful unholy and profane, ungrateful or unthankful. People will be unthankful. Romans 1 tells us that because although they knew God, they did not glorify God nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now I want to just remind you what the scriptures say about being thankful because it's a key. Can you see we've shifted gears a little bit. So write this down in your mind or write it down somewhere. Here's how you got it. We got to remember this. All right. You guys with me? Be thankful always. Always. 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Last week, you know we were down in Florida. And we did go to Rodney's church. But the, during the week, we spent time with Jack Taylor. And uh, this guy that impacted my life, I've shared that. I won't go back into all that story. But he's 84 years old now, but burning with the fire of God. A kingdom man. You, you know Jack Taylor? Anyway, it's an amazing. He's going to come here in March. We've already got him signed up. But anyway, I met this guy. I'm sitting next in this little... Uh, cafeteria deal and one of the pastors that's at these meetings he's from texas and he starts telling me about this disease that his wife had called huntington's disease i, I didn't really know anything much about you know, he tells a story he's 28 years old a pastor he gets married church of about 150 people or so he's playing racquetball newlywed with his wife no wait they had a couple children right they had a couple three children Three, two daughters. They were young, though. So they'd only been married, you know, a few years, whatever, however long it takes to do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It takes at least nine months, nine months, nine, whatever. Okay, so he's been married three years. Anyway, he says they're playing racquetball, and his wife grabs her head, and she starts screaming in the racquetball court and says, oh, you got to take me to the doctor. Something's wrong. Something's happened. Something's wrong. He said that began... 24 and a half years of living through hell. He had no idea. She was 
diagnosed with Huntington's disease. It's a neurodegenerative disease. It affects your, your emotions, your, uh, you know, your mind, your mental ability, your coordination. Uh, it thing you start just jumping, flapping. It's just an amazing, it's horrible. He said it's the most horrible disease because you still, in a way, you have your right mind at times, but it's, it's very evil. And it says your children have a 50% chance of getting the disease. And he t went on and talked about how that today, when Mother's Day rolls around, his children send him Mother's Day cards because he's the only mother they've ever known. He was their mother, their father. He was always, he was Little League soccer, Little League baseball. He was everything, their high school graduation. He was also the worship leader at this church, you know, back in those days. I did that too. I was a worship leader. But anyway, he would wheel his wife in for a time and park her right on the front row, but, you know, she would make all kinds of, it was horrible. Then they had to leave her at home. He said there were times he'd get ready to preach and he'd get a call. It was her. And she would say, I'm going to slit my throat. I'm going to end my life now. And he'd have to rush home, take care of her, then rush back, jump in the pulpit. This is the day. This is the day. You know, he had to do this kind of stuff. He was trying not to, you know, sadden the church. But uh, at the same time, the church grew from 150 to 2,000. On the wedding day, uh, yeah, the wedding day of one of his daughters, I think I'm getting pretty much, pretty much right. This daughter earlier in the day comes to him and says, Dad, and she's got her wedding dress on. I want to go see mom. At that point, they had to put her in a nursing home because it just, he fed her, he clothed her, everything. Why he's being a pastor. And some of the people in the church didn't even know it was happening. They didn't even, when it was all said and done, they said, we didn't know you were going through all this stuff. Wow. He was faithful. It was amazing. But anyway, it's her wedding day. She says, my mom missed my graduation, missed my birthday. She missed every Christmas, every Thanksgiving day. She missed, I'm not going to let her miss my wedding day. Take me to the nursing home. I want to see my mama. So they take her to the nursing home. And they say one little miracle happened. When she walked in with her wedding dress, when they sat down in front of her mom, he'd been, she'd been out of lost conscious. She looks up and points at her and opens her eyes. And they said that just made it. But then she passed away just a little bit of time after that. He told us at the retreat, at these meetings we were at, that his youngest daughter who had children just called him and said, Dad, I've got Huntington's disease. His oldest daughter called, Dad, you got to come over. He gets over to his house. This was before. I've got Hunt Huntington's disease. Both daughters and his wife. And he said in the meantime, he would see many healings, many people healed by the power of God, but not his wife and now his two daughters. And I was thinking, God, how are you going to give thanks? What? And you know what he told us? He said, uh, he said, all these religious people come to you with these religious things like, hey, brother, God will never put more on you than, than you can bear. You know that. He said he got so sick of the religious talk. Folks don't know it. They're trying their best to be nice. <laughs> they don't know. They had no idea what he was facing. And I probably there were others in there. Well, because your sin, you know, I'm sure there was some of that going on in there too, just like Job. Job was a righteous man. But I said, God, how are you going to? The only way you're going to be able to give thanks in all, all ways and everything is if you know who's reigning and will never come off of the throne. That's the only way. Who's reigning? I'm a part of a kingdom that will last beyond my 70 to 80 to 90 years. This kingdom will last forever and ever and ever. And the king is reigning. And all powers and authorities are under him. And then another way we're to be thankful is, is to be thankful in advance. Remember Philippians 4, 6? But by everything, by prayer and supplication, make your requests known unto God with thanksgiving. Remember that? And the peace of God will overtake you, basically, cover you. I mean, you won't even be able to bear it. Give thanks in advance. And then in everything we said that, but it's, it's, it's all in. And then be thankful as an act of worship. Man, there's going to come a day when we come into worship. I'm telling you, we're not going to be able to do anything but just rejoice, give thanks, shout, dance, holler, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. It, 
Wait, why do we? Thanksgiving is not just a one day of a year thing for the people that know the king and they're walking in the kingdom and they're walking in the blessing. They're walking in the presence, the glory. Thanksgiving is every day. They're going to find that out. It's thankful. I'm thankful. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. But didn't you just read the six o'clock news? Thank you, God. That in everything, Lord, you're ruling, you're reigning. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, Psalm 116 says. And then it's how we should enter. We enter with thanksgiving. But then here's the last thing. Thanksgiving is going to be part of the heavenly chorus that will be sung in the heavens by the saints who experienced the power and the faithfulness of God when they were on the earth. And they're going to give him thanks and power and glory and honor. And thank you can read about it in Revelation chapter 7. All the elders and the saints and the angels gathered around the throne because they knew he was faithful. They came out of a great tribulation. The amplified the tribulation also means persecution. We already know persecution is coming. It's, if you desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. The reason there's little persecution, there's little desire to live godly. The more desire you have to live godly, the more someone is going to get upset with you. And that someone is called the devil. So what do you do? You rise up and you give thanks and get ready. Thanksgiving is going to last through all of eternity. All of eternity. For those who know their position, their place, they know the king. Now, I'm going to end up with this. First prayer I ever learned to pray. Do you guys remember it? Do you remember, Rick? First prayer. You had to learn it. God is good. God is great. Let us thank him for our food. That's first prayer. You better know he's good. You better know he's great. But for him to be good and to him to be great, he's got to be your God. He's your God. If he's your God, I can promise you he's a good, good father. You, you got to have that in your framework, your DNA. God's a good God. People are going to run to you. I thought he was a good God. Why is all this happening? You can tell him he is a good, good God. He's a good God. He's a great God. And he's my God. You want, him to, you want to know him as your God? If you know him, you'll, you'll know his goodness. You know, his goodness leads to repentance. The goodness of God leads you to repentance. And there's some repentance that needs to happen today. And if you repent, you turn to him. I had a friend down in Mobile who used to always tell us, you take one step toward God, he'll take two steps toward you. And he would pass out $2 bills on the streets of Mobile, Alabama. That was his calling card. That's how he would gain, you know, get an, uh, a conversation going. He'd give him a $2 bill. Now, you take one step toward God, he'll take two steps toward you. He led a lot of people to the Lord like that. It's a good way to do it. But I can tell you it's true. You take one step today, he'll take two. He'll overtake you. The blessings of God will overtake you overtake you what kind of God is that he's a God that died he sent his son to die that's how and so I just want to ask you we we really Jerry we really feel like we're to do this every time we're getting ready but there's people here today there may be people watching I want to ask you if this was the last your last day on earth one day it's going to be I can promise you one day it will be true it will be your last day on earth if you died, would you spend eternity in heaven? That's my question to you. If you cannot say without any question, I know him. I know him. I'm going to spend eternity. I know him. He's my Lord. If you can't, you can today. You can know him today. Repent. Turn your life over to him. Say, God, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. Someone recently told me. I was shocked. I won't tell you who it was. But they said, you know, the people in the world, they know they're sinners. No, they don't. We got to tell them. You got to listen. This is sin. It's sin. Abortion is sin. They're going to really come at us now.
because of this guy that shot up in that uh, clinic out there. You know what he was? He was an anti-abortion man. Oh, how, how horrible that is. Hey, I'm one, of an, I'm one of those anti-abortion people. I believe in Jesus. I believe in life. Life begins in the womb. But I'm telling you, you got to know what you believe today. And you can know him. You can say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I've sinned. I have sinned. This is sin. If you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you. And he'll cleanse you. And this will be a new day of... You'll be born again. It's a real thing. This is not fake. It's not dress rehearsal. You can literally be born again. Remember, John... Can again a man enter to the womb? Yes. Born again. You can be born again. Yeah, but I messed up the first part. That's all right. You can be born again. You get a new start. And then some of you, you you're not as close to the Lord as you were. You, you've lost the fire. You come around these doors, you, you're going to get the fire. We believe there's a fire raging at this altar. And so you come, we'll pray for you. Pray the fire of God will fall on you and you'll go out and start a revival. Somebody's got to. Somebody's got to be Jesus out in this world. Be light. Be salt. Salt and light. You have a purpose. God will protect you in ways you'll never, ever understand. There's coming divine deliverance for the people that are doing the will of God. You remember that scripture? He said, uh, if you drink any deadly thing, it'll not harm you. That's not just some blanket statement you can stand on. It, that statement is given to those who are doing the will of God. They're walking him, the, after him, following the lamb wherever he goes. And God will protect you. There's a place of protection. Not running from the battle, running to it. Not running from the devil, running to him and saying, Thus says the Lord thy God. My God reigns. Is anybody there? You can know him today. You can be on fire. And then we're going to pray for a new anointing. A new anointing. Just to flood this house. How many of you need a new anointing? New anointing. Let's just stand. Would you put something in, Joseph? And um, or maybe, yeah, just just flick something in there. Come on up, JT. Can you come? You know that good good father song? Can you do that? Of course you know it. You're the one who did it. <laughs> you did it. Let's just pray, and then we're going to have communion. Yes, we're going to do that. But just, I want to. Go ahead and start playing. If you're here today, you say, I don't really know that I know the Lord, but I want to know that I know him. Would you just raise your hand? We're going to pray for you. Is anybody, maybe you're watching, but if you're in this room, you say, I don't know. Would you pray for me this morning that I'll leave this place knowing that he's my Lord and my Savior? Anybody, we're going to pray out loud, so you want to get in on it. It's just pray. I want to pray this prayer. You pray it out loud you mean it there's a whole bunch of saints in here to support you but you if you confess him acknowledge him you whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved so just pray say dear god let's all pray dear god i believe in jesus that he is the son of the living god that he died on the cross and he rose again and i confess you now as my lord come into my heart save me fill me with the Holy Spirit Lord for the rest of my life I'm going to live for you forever forever I'm born again I'm a new creature all things are passed away all things are become new brand new I'm going to walk out of here today a new man or woman a new person and I'm going to do my part I'm going to fulfill the mission that God has given me in Jesus name now Lord I pray for a new anointing if you want this just raise your hand I want a new anointing a new anointing to do your will to be an ambassador in, in this hour I want the glory of God I want that fragrance of the knowledge of Christ to rest upon me so Lord we ask you release the fragrance of heaven Lord, I know that's the will of God. Release the fragrance on your people that everywhere we go, we will be a sweet-smelling aroma of the fragrance of the knowledge of God in every place. In Jesus' name, we receive it by faith. We pray. Let's, how many of you have un, unsaved loved ones? 
that Lord we pray for our unsaved loved ones household salvation we declare be saved in the name of Jesus come into the kingdom be saved your God reigns we declare just pray for our, our nation God send revival to America the churches in America oh God Lord we, our hope is not in the church our hope is in your kingdom you're the king but we ask you the church is a tool send revival to churches all across America send the wind send the fire send the flame of heaven ignite your people oh God